So you're interested in running a hair mineral analysis test with your clients, but everywhere online is telling you that this test is not accurate or not scientifically validated. I'm Kendra from KendraPerry.net, and by the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how that is 100% not true. For functional health training and online business strategies for health coaches, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so that you get notified when I post a new video every Thursday. So hair mineral analysis is by far one of the most powerful and informative tools that you can use with your clients, but it has a bad reputation. There are a lot of websites on the internet, or maybe even your clients are coming to you and saying, why are we running this test? It's not accurate. So by the end of this video, you will understand why HGMA is accurate and by backed by scientific studies so that you can convince your skeptical followers and clients that this is actually a test they should be running. So I have been running HTMA in my health coaching practice for over three years now. I've spent so much time, probably hundreds of hours, diving into the research and learning how to properly interpret this test. I love it so much that I teach this to practitioners in my HTMA expert course, and all of them would agree that this is a total game changer when it comes to their own health and the transformation of their clients. So let's discuss some of the research that actually validates HTMA testing. So one of the most important studies on hair mineral analysis was done by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency in 1979. So this was a review paper, which basically means they looked at all the available research at the time uh, to come up with a summary and what that research was actually showing overall. So they went through over 400 different studies on hair mineral analysis for metals and minerals. And what they determined was that it was fully accurate and a very good representation for the monitoring of most toxic metals and minerals. So in 2005, in the Journal of Trace Element Biology, 50 mothers and their newborns were studied for selenium status. And what they found at the end of the study was that there was a positive correlation with selenium, selenium levels between umbilical cord fluid, maternal blood, placenta, and the hair levels, the selenium levels in the hair levels of those newborns. And guys, I would love to know, comment below and let me know, are you using hair tissue mineral analysis in your practice? The next study I wanna discuss was done in year 2000 by the Journal of Science of the Total Environment. So this study was designed to determine whether hair calcium concentration actually predicted mortality from coronary heart disease. This study was done in the UK and it was seeking to determine if environmental factors had any influence on hair levels of calcium and calcium metabolism in the body. So hair samples were collected from over 4,000 males in 40 different health districts in the UK. And what they found was the people living in the areas that had the hardest water, which just means that they have very high levels of calcium in their water, were also the people who had very high levels of calcium in their hair. So that alone shows that exposure to calcium is reflected in the hair biopsy sample. So the final study I wanna discuss was done in 1994 by the Journal of Orthopedics and Traumatology. And in this study, 30 patients who had had hip replacement done were studied. And usually with hip replacement, they're using some sort of metal as that hip replacement. Previously it was cobalt, but these days it's usually titanium and aluminum. And in this case it was titanium and aluminum that were being used. And so the, the sample was, the sample size was split into three groups of 10. And one group was monitored after two years, one was studied after four and one after six. So in every single group, the two-year group, the four-year group, and the six-year group, high levels of titanium and aluminum were actually found in the hair samples, and they were especially high in the group who were looked at after six years. So guys, I'm gonna link to the research I discussed in this video at the bottom of this video, and I will link to a page that basically details all the research on hair mineral analysis. There's hundreds of studies so that you can refer to that and do some of your own research so that you can come to your own conclusion whether hair mineral analysis is actually accurate and scientifically valid. Guys, and if you are still feeling in the dark as to what hair mineral analysis actually is and maybe why you should be using it, make sure to watch my video titled, What is Hair Mineral Analysis Testing? So now that you guys are hopefully a little bit more familiar with some of the research that clinically validates hair mineral analysis testing, make sure to grab my free hair mineral analysis interpretation guide for practitioners by clicking the link below. 
And guys, if you like this video, make sure to let me know by liking it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your fellow health coaches, anyone you think would like this information. And definitely let me know in the comments what you learned and what your biggest take home from this video was. I would love to know.